Enrique here, and I'm going to be talking about building a project portfolio. Now, the logical question on your mind is probably, well, why do you need a project portfolio? I mean, we're not architects, right? We're, we're analysts. And while it may not seem like having a project portfolio is necessary, I'd actually argue that a project portfolio is your number one selling point to potential employers. Why? Because it proves that you have the skills for the job. Sure, resumes and LinkedIn profiles can help tell employers about your skills, but project portfolios allow you to actually show them what you're capable of. And this is huge, and it can be a key differentiator between you and other candidates that look just like you on paper. Now, a great project portfolio should highlight many things. Number one, your technical proficiency in data analysis tools like Excel, Tableau, Power BI, and SQL. Now that should be quite clear, but projects in your portfolio aren't just meant to serve as a technical flex. They also need to show your strategic thinking and your communication skills. Employers want to see that you're able to identify and solve real problems and that you can communicate your process and your results clearly. And if you've taken our Thinking Like an Analyst course, then you'll identify these three attributes as the analytics trifecta, which really is no coincidence here. Now, beyond that, a project portfolio should show that you have business acumen and a real passion for analytics. And this last point is actually more important than you'd think, because remember, you're trying to sell yourself as someone that they'd like to work with. So letting them know that you love working with data can really go a long way. So hopefully you don't need any more reasons here, and now you're starting to think about what projects to actually start putting in your portfolio. Now, there are four elements to a winning project that we're going to talk about, but in essence, a great portfolio project should be clear and easily consumable and guide the viewer through your thought process and approach. So each project in your portfolio should answer these questions. Number one, what's the business case or context behind the project? What key insights were you able to derive and what impact did they have on the business? How are you using data and visualization to tell the story or support your findings? And finally, what technical tools or techniques did you use to conduct the analysis? Now, if you get these points right, and if this is all crystal clear to anyone who's looking at a project in your portfolio, then you've really hit the sweet spot. So you have your projects now, but how do you actually turn them into a portfolio that can fall into the hands of recruiters? Well, there are a number of options for building and managing project portfolios, but ideally, you should look for a solution that meets the following criteria. A, it needs to be easily shareable, so you want to have some sort of link or a file that you can send to anyone you want. It needs to be clear and consumable, so that the people that you shared it with are able to read and understand it properly. And this is where the steps that we outlined in the previous lectures come into play and will turn the projects in your portfolio into winners. It should also be publicly accessible though. And this is a big one because you don't want to rely on just sending your portfolio out. You want people to be able to passively discover it and have them reach out to you. And that's going to get you a much bigger audience and open you up for possibilities that you may not have even been looking for. It also needs to be easy to manage because the last thing you want is to struggle more on actually putting your portfolio together than on completing the projects themselves. So projects should be easy to add, prioritize, and edit. And finally, it should be free or at least cheap to host. Honestly, there are enough solutions out there that you don't need to overspend to build your portfolio. Let's kick things off by looking at an example of using LinkedIn as your project portfolio. So this is Zoe Douglas's LinkedIn profile. She's actually a Maven Hall of Famer, and this was the project post that she did for her winning entry in the Maven Taxi Challenge. Now this works because it's easy to share, it's just a simple LinkedIn post, it's publicly accessible and discoverable. You'll notice that it has over 150 reactions and it's got 28 comments. It includes a link to the full dashboard for anyone that's interested, and that actually proves her technical proficiency in Power BI as well. And even though the post is short, it shows a clear passion for data. And finally, since it is LinkedIn, then it's also free to host and manage. Now, you may have noticed this already, but pro tip, feature a link to your blog or website in your LinkedIn profile if you have one. 
Zoe does that here and that gives a ton of visibility to her website with her full project portfolio. So you don't have to dig around her LinkedIn posts to find her projects. Now on the subject of websites, let's move on to the next example, which is Mark Cunningham's website. Now, fun fact, Mark is actually another Maven Challenge winner. He had an amazing entry for the Maven Magic Challenge, actually. And this is his full project portfolio. And as you can see, he offers a sneak peek into each project in which he provides the context. And then he links out to the full report, which not only includes his Power BI dashboards that are embedded, but it also has a detailed explanation of the project and of his process. Now, this works because, again, it's easy to share. He actually has his website and his contact info on LinkedIn. The projects are very easy to follow in the way they're written. And to be honest, Mark is a fantastic writer. So he also demonstrates his creativity and communication skills, as well as his passion and personality. Plus, since it is a website, then it gives him unlimited customization options. Now, pro tip, if you are interested in creating a website for your portfolio, then I'd recommend checking out sites like Wix and Squarepaste to build and host your websites for free. You don't need to have any coding experience and they actually have plenty of templates to help get you started. Mark is actually using Wix here. And before I continue, I also wanted to showcase another of Mark's projects, which is a resume he built using Power BI. Now, I love this because this is actually a resume that is showing you his skills as an analyst, not just telling you, which is amazing. He actually even has a Star Wars version of it that he created to tailor for a specific role because he knew that one of the hiring managers was a Star Wars fan. Needless to say, he was made an offer. Let's move on to Tableau Public now and a familiar name in Dustin Cabral. For those of you that don't know, Dustin is our Tableau instructor here at Maven and he's an absolute Tableau rock star, as you can probably tell from his profile here. He's got 35 dashboards and you can click on each one and it shows the full version. Now this works because again, it's easy to share. He links out from his contact info on LinkedIn as well. It's publicly accessible. You can see he's got over 1400 followers and the number of views and likes on each project shows social proof. You can see that his damnation dashboard, which is the second one, has over 25,000 views. So it clearly shows that he's a Tableau expert. And most of all, I think, especially for Dustin, it really shows passion and personality. I mean, how many other people do you know that would make a dashboard on the first words of their children, right? And again, Tableau Public is free to manage and to host. So pro tip, if you are a heavy Tableau user, then creating a Tableau Public profile really is a must to cement your place. Now on to GitHub and another known face in the data community, Udit. Now, when you land on his GitHub profile, you can see that he starts out by just giving you some fun facts and information about himself, and his projects are uploaded as repositories. So if we jump into one, like his Florida insurance portfolio analysis here, you'll see that he describes his process and also includes all of his files, from the raw source data to the transformation steps he applied using Python, and then to the finished Power BI dashboard. So this works because again, it's easy to share. So like everyone else, he's actually taking advantage of LinkedIn to link out to his GitHub profile. The projects are easy to follow as he's including detailed explanations for each one. It shows passion and personality through his landing page. And it actually includes the most technical depth that we've seen so far because he's got all of his files included, which goes to show his coding proficiency using Python as he's including the code. And finally, GitHub is also free to host. Now the pro tip here, GitHub is a popular platform for developers, software engineers, and data scientists. So if that does seem like a role that you'd be interested, then it's definitely worth thinking about. On to the final example, PDF slides. And this is actually my own example that's using the final project from my advanced dashboards course. And again, the idea behind the slides is to take advantage of the format to practice storytelling with data. So the first slide is about introducing the project data set and the tools used, which in this case was Excel. Then we establish the business scenario and notice that I'm using DataVis to illustrate the point. We dive a little deeper into the problem. We then present the solution that we arrived at along with the supporting insights. And then we round things off and include a link to the full Excel online workbook for more depth. All right, so why does this one work? Well, first of all, it makes the project very easy to follow. 
and it keeps the focus on visualization and data storytelling. Now it does include some technical depth with the link here as well, and it works especially well because this was a specific business case in which explanatory analysis was conducted. And finally, this was done using PowerPoint, so it's easy to customize, and it's free to create. Well, technically PowerPoint isn't free, but you can use Google Slides instead to accomplish the same thing for free. And this is something that by itself may not reach anyone, but packaged up in a PDF and uploaded as a LinkedIn post can be extremely effective. So really don't shy away from creating PDF slides here to really flex those storytelling skills. And that actually rounds up the examples, so hopefully you were able to draw some inspiration from all of these, and you've started to develop some ideas about how you can start to develop your own portfolio, especially because we've got an assignment for you coming up next.